Jennifer from Fiberflux. Welcome back to week two of the Fiberflux Summer Crochet Long. We are working on our Land and Sea Cardi. This is a beautiful, soft, lofty cardigan sweater that feels like a wearable blanket that's wonderful as we head into fall or even right now in the uh, air conditioned spaces if you need a little bit of coziness. Last week we talked about the supplies. I'm gonna be using Red Heart Dreamy. We talked a little bit about yarn substitutions and things like that. Today we're gonna to talk about the Granny Hexagon. Our sweater is very cleverly constructed with two Granny Hexagons that we're gonna next week fold over and seam together. But this week we're gonna focus on how to make the Granny Hexagon portion. We're also gonna talk a little bit about changing colors when we wanna go from one round to the next. So stay tuned, we're gonna go right into the tutorial. Okay, we're gonna start with this beautiful gray and uh, this yarn in particular, the Dreamy yarn, has like a fuzzy uh, feel to it. Now I'm curious to see what everyone um, is choosing, and I've seen a, a color of your, a couple of your choices so far. Um, but if you pick a smoother strand, you'll get more stitch definition. If you choose something fuzzy like this, you'll get like a softer look. So just be mindful of that as well. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some of this gray yarn. We're gonna start, we're gonna work a few rounds in the gray, and then I'm gonna show you in a little bit how to switch colors. So the granny hexagon is really easy to construct. If you've ever made a granny square, you'll notice it's very similar in how you make it. Okay, so let me get the end of my yarn here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to begin by work putting a slip knot on our hook. So to make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind your fingers, insert your hook, pull up the loop, and tighten. All right, let me just, um, I'm gonna zoom in just a tiny bit so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Okay, next we're going to chain four. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. Next, we're going to join with a slip stitch to create a ring. We're gonna be working our stitches into the center of the ring. So insert your hook into the chain farthest from the hook, that chain you first made. Bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. So we joined with a slip stitch. Now you have a ring that you'll be working your stitches into. As a side note, if you'd prefer to do the magic ring technique, uh, please feel free to do that instead. I know a lot of you prefer that. I'll put the link down below for that if you'd like to learn that technique as well. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is chain four. So one, two, three, four. This is gonna begin round one of our hexagon. Okay, next we're going to work a double crochet into the center of the ring. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the center of the ring, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops on your hook, then you're gonna chain one. So our goal here is to get 12 spokes on our wheel, okay? So we have one with that starting chain, and then we just did a double crochet. So we're gonna repeat this 10 more times to get our 12 spokes. So we're gonna do this 10 more times, and then these two also count for a total of 12, okay? So we're gonna go double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one. Okay, so so far we have one, two, three, four spokes, double crochet, chain one, that's five, double crochet, chain one, that's six. Just Now, if you also notice this tail we have, I'm holding that along the edge as we work, so that we'll weave it in as we go along. Okay, so double crochet, chain one. Whoops, that tail is getting caught up in my work here. Double crochet, chain one, and you can slide your stitches around. Now as you can see, that fuzzy appearance um, gives it a nice softened look. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, Chain one, let's count what we have so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, whoops, let's chain one. 
Wait a minute. Let me back up. There we go. Chain one. And then our last double crochet. Okay. Chain one. And then to close the round, uh, we're going to count three chains up. One, two, three. And we're going to join with a stip slip stitch to close the round. So insert your hook into that third chain up. Bring up a loop. Now bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. Okay? So this is round one. It should look like a circle with 12 spokes around it. Okay? So we're going to stick with the gray and go ahead and pull that tight. And I like to trim this right away just to uh, have it so it's not dangling and in the way. Okay, so we're going to stick with the gray. Now let me show you. We need to get our hook to the right spot. Uh, we're not quite there because we, we're going to work into this first space here. So see our, our stitch and our hook is back here. So work a slip stitch over to the right spot. So work it into that first stitch there. And then work it into that space. And now we're in the right spot to begin round two. So again, we're going to stick with the gray. We're going to work a couple of rounds, and then I'll show you how to switch colors in just a little bit. Okay, so let's begin round two. What we're going to do is chain three. One, two, three. Now as a side note, if you remember, the last round we, we did a chain four. But this round we want to do a chain three. Okay? Then we're going to work a double crochet in that same space, just like that and then chain one. So we're increasing our circle. So each one of these spaces is gonna have a two double crochets chain one this time. So that chain three at the beginning counted as one of our double crochets. Hop over to the next space and work two double crochets into that space. One and two, and then work a chain one. Next space, two double crochet. One, two, work a chain one. Next space, work two double crochets into that space. Let me grab a little bit more yarn here. We have tons of yarn, so I really want to make my cardigan nice and loose and slouchy, so lots of yarn to work with. And these colors, I love these muted colors. They're very wearable. And you can do your cardigan in all one color if you like, but I'm going to switch up my colors a little bit. Okay, so keep going. Two double crochet chain one, two double crochet, chain one. I'm going to move my tapestry needle. You know, it's rattling a little bit on my table as I work. And then we're going to work two double crochet, chain one, working our way all the way around this circle, two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, chain one. We're getting a nice size circle already. I love the K crochet hook. I use that hook all the time. It's just a comfortable hook to hold in the hand and you get really rapid results, which I love to see. Okay, so all the way around our circle with our double crochets, Two double crochet, chain one, okay, and two double crochet, chain one, okay, and now we're back to where we started. So what we're going to do is the same thing, count three chains up, one, two, three, insert your hook into that chain. Actually, we forgot our chain, so do one chain. Sorry about that. And then count three chains up. One, two, three. Join with a slip stitch to close. And now round two is complete. So it looks very nice. Let's work on round three next. And then what we're going to do is we're going to switch colors. Now, I wanted to point out our hexagon is still a circle. We're going to work one more circle, and then the round after that we will magically transform it into a hexagon, okay? So once again, because we're not switching colors, we need to slip stitch over to the correct area. Now, 
what, what I'm gonna show you in a few minutes is when we do switch colors, you can just tie it into the right spot. So it's not as big of a deal, but so, and you don't have to slip stitch. But when you're sticking with the same color, your hook's not quite in the same spot when you finish the round, so you just have to scoot over. Okay, so let's begin round three. We're gonna do it, it's gonna be very, very similar to round two. We're gonna chain three, one, two, three, same thing we did before. But instead, because we're still increasing, we're going to work two double crochets into that space. One and two, and then work a chain one, okay? So then in the next space, because that chain three counted as one of our double crochets, see we have three posts here. So hop on over to the next space and work three double crochet, one, two, and three, and then we're going to chain one, hop to the next space, work three double crochet, one, two, let me just uh, get my yarn here, three, then work a chain one, we're just gonna do this in each space all the way around. Remember that chain one space we created? So we're not going in between these two double crochets because that is uh, a grouping, but those chain one spaces is what I'm referring to when I say the space. Okay, so next space, work three double crochet. One, two, and three chain one, that will create the space for our next round. Hop to the next space, work three double crochet, one, two, and three, chain one. All right, next space, three double crochet, one, two, whoops, three, chain one. Okay, so we're gonna continue this all the way around. Work three double crochets in each one of those chain one spaces from the previous round. So three double crochet, chain one. Three double crochet, train, chain one, all the way around. And then once we get towards the end of this round, we'll rejoin. Okay, so I'm just working that last double crochet of our round, then a chain one, and then I'm gonna join, like we did before, in the third chain up. So one, two, three, insert it into that chain. Bring up a loop, bring that loop through the loop already on your hook, and round three is complete. So we're gonna do two things for round four. We're gonna switch colors, and we're also going to transform our circle into a hexagon. So grab your next color, and what we're gonna do is cut the yarn, Go ahead and fasten that off, and then you're all set. Okay, so we're gonna switch gears a little bit, and I grabbed the other color. So in any of the spaces around your circle, uh, you can tie the new yarn on. I like to choose the opposite side. This is just a personal preference, because as I weave them in as I go along, it kind of limits the bulk a little bit of trying to weave in two ends at the same time. But definitely feel free to do it however you like. So to tie the new yarn on, what we're going to do is insert the hook into any of the spaces, pull the new yarn through, and then just tie it on. Just like that. Um, and I chose the aqua, well, because I love that color, but also I wanted to show a little contrast as we're working into this circle. Okay, so what we're gonna do is reinsert the hook back into the space, bring up a loop, and then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. So the first round of our hexagon is gonna be a series of corners and sides, is how we refer to them. So we're gonna do a corner, then a side, then a corner, then a side. This will set up our hexagon shape, okay? So we did a chain three, so let's work the first corner. Work two double crochets into that space, the same space. 
one and two. And let me get a little bit more yarn here because we're going to need a little bit of it. Okay. Now, still in the same space, we're going to chain one and then work three more double crochets into that same space. One, two, and three. Just like that. And you can see the space and the two little groups of three double crochets. Okay, now I held that end in as I went along and you can see how it's woven in now. Okay, let's hop over to the next space because we're gonna be working a side. So chain one, and then in that space work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Just like that. Now that creates a flat side of our hexagon. What we just did back here will create the little point of our hexagon. Okay, so we're ready to work another side. So chain one and then work three double crochet. One, two, and three. Chain one, but in the same space also work three more double crochet. One, two, and three, just like that. So now we have another little point. So you can see we're starting to get point, and then a side, and then a corner, okay? Now chain one, and now we're ready to do a side again. So we're gonna do corner side, corner side, corner side, all the way around. So we'll do that by working three double crochet, then a chain one, and now we're ready to do a corner again. Let me just get a little bit more yarn here. And I have to say, I'm really liking these two colors together and I think it's gonna be more fun as we start to add even more colors later. Okay, so we're gonna work our next corner and do three double crochet, one, two, and three and then a chain one, and then three more double crochet all in that same space. So one, two, and three. So now we have our next corner established. Now if we lay this flat, we can start to see how our hexagon is, is playing out, okay? So we just did a corner, now we're ready to do a side. So chain one and then work three double crochet into that next space. One, two, and three. Chain one, once more. And I'm at my next tail. So I'm just gonna kind of hold that in place as I work and that will weave that tail in as well. So we're gonna work another corner. Three double crochet, one, two, and three, then we'll do a chain one, holding that tail as we approach it, and work three more in the same space. So one, two, and three. Okay, it's really starting to shape up as a hexagon now. Very exciting, okay. So, moving right along, chain one, and then work your next side. Three double crochet. One, holding that tail as I go. Two, three. And I have to say, yarn that has a little halo like this or some fuzziness um, is very forgiving. It, it, um, everything kind of blends together. All right, let's work our next corner. Three double crochet, one, two, and three. Chain one, and then three more. One, 
two, and three. Chain one, let's work the next side. One, two, and three. Chain one, and then our next corner. One, two, and three. Get a little more yarn. And we're working the corner, so chain one, and then work three double crochets in that same space. One, two, and three. Okay, we're in the home stretch. Now you can see as we come around, we're gonna chain one and then work that last side. So one, two, and three. Chain one, and then we're gonna finish off the round. Count three chains up, one, two, three, and insert your hook into that third chain up with a slip stitch to close the round. Let's leave our hook in because we're gonna stick with the same color for the next round, okay? So let's look at our handiwork for just a moment. You can kind of sharpen up those corners if you need to. Just like that, and it's really looking pretty. And I have to say too, it's grown quite a bit in just four rounds. So we're gonna stick with the aqua because uh, what I'm gonna do now, again, any kind of striping you'd like to do is, is totally up to you. I'm gonna do three rounds of each color before switching just because it's less, instead of doing it every single round, it's gonna be less ends to deal with, less times to cut the yarn. However, please feel free to do your striping however you like, okay? Now we're not quite in, this, in the right spot to begin the next round. Um, we need to be in this corner space, okay? So just slip stitch over into each stitch along the way until you get to that corner space, okay? And there it is, okay? So this round is pretty much the same as the round before it. We're going to be working corners and sides the same way, but every round you do, as it grows outward, will add a side. So your corners will always be worked the same way, but each round you do, you'll add a side to each side, if you will. So this time, as you can see, we're going to be working the corner the same way, but we're gonna have side, side corner, side, side corner. Now remember last time we only had one side here. So each time we work around, we'll add sides and that will grow our hexagon, okay? So let's get started with this round and then we're gonna kind of work on our own and complete the round, okay? So we got our hook to the right spot, that corner space, you always wanna begin on those corner spaces. And what you're gonna do is the same thing. Chain three, whoops, one, two, three, work two double crochet, because remember that chain three counts as one of our double crochets. So work two double crochets in that corner space, then work a chain, and then work three double crochets, all in that corner space. One, whoops, two, and three. Okay, so we have our first corner established, and it looks the same, they kind of uh, stack on top of one another. Then chain one. Now I'm going to show you how we do the two sides. So just do three double crochet, one, two, and three. Chain one, work your next side. There we go. One, two, and three. So see how we added two sides this time because our hexagon is growing. Okay, now we are back to another corner. 
So as you move on and your hexagon's really, really big, you'll just know to work a corner in the corner before it and a side in the side before it, okay? So let's work our next corner and then we're gonna kind of finish the round on our own and rejoin towards the end, okay? So work your corner by working three double crochet, one, two, three, chain one, and then three double crochet. Let me just grab some more yarn here. There we go. One, two, and three. Okay, so we have our next corner and you can see our hexagon is growing and growing. So let's keep going around and we'll rejoin towards the end of the round here. So we're gonna work a side in the next one, just like that chain one, work a side, whoops, work a side in the next one, and so forth, okay? So let's keep continuing around. So we're gonna do corner, side, side, corner, side, side, corner, side, side, corner, and so forth, okay? So let's rejoin towards the end of the round, and then we'll move on. So we're just gonna keep repeating rounds over and over and over. Again, we're doing three rounds of each color, unless you decide you want to do a different color sequence. And just keep working the sides and the corners the same way on each round and you'll have more sides each time like we talked about before. Now I want to show you, I went ahead and worked on a hexagon and I added some size to it. So let me grab that. You can kind of see what we have going on here. So I'm going to lay this out and as you can see, it's just like our other hexagon but it's grown quite a bit. So you can see too how the colors are playing out. We have the gray, the aqua, and the celery. Gray, aqua, and then if you were to keep going, you would do another round of celery. So this sweater I have uh, measured specifically to the person who requested this sweater. So what you're gonna do, we're gonna get into this a little bit more next week when we talk about seaming um, and putting together our sweater, but to give you an idea of what size you'll need, um, again, this is very customizable. So you have your hexagon and there's a point at the top and a point at the bottom, two points on either side. So what you'll wanna do is flip it over so that the wrong side is facing you and take that top point and fold it all the way down to the bottom point here and get everything laid out flat. And this is where the magic of this sweater or this cardigan rather, comes into play because we now have this geometric triangle size um, piece now, okay? So this is actually half of the sweater. Our sweater is halfway done. So that's why we need to make two of these hexagons because what you're gonna do is flip it. So see how the fold is right here? And then this is the sides up here. And then this is going to be the front of the sweater, and then this is where one of your arms will go up top here, and your hand will stick out here, okay? So next week, what we're gonna be doing is learning how to take the hexagon. So go ahead and make the second hexagon. And we're gonna take the two hexagons and kind of fold them the same way so that they're mirror images of one another. And then we're gonna seam everything together. I'm gonna to show you exactly how to do all that. And as well, I'm gonna provide some charts and diagrams on the Fiberflux blog as well for those of you who kind of need to see things um, in a chart or uh, graphic form, if you will. But also what we're gonna do, if you want to make your sleeves a little bit longer, or if you wanna make the length of your uh, cardigan a little bit longer, we're gonna learn how to add some rounds onto that as well. Well, actually the sleeve will be rounds, but because this is a cardigan and it's open in the front, the bottom will be worked in rows. And we're gonna keep the same color sequence. And then the week after that, we're gonna add some beautiful edging, just to kind of frame everything in and make it look more finished. And we're gonna be doing the finish work, okay? So this week, just finish your first hexagon and your second hexagon. And then when we rejoin for week three, what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to put this all together and optional, you can extend 
uh, the edges of your sleeves and the bottom part of your cardigan as well. Now, if you like it as is, definitely, you know, feel free to do it however you want. I love those projects that are very customizable. And also when we have our maker gallery, it's really fun to see how you all, what kind of direction you each went with this project as well. That happens for pretty much every project we do. So work on the hexagons and we will rejoin next week to put this all together. Okay, so that's how you make the granny hexagon. And obviously you wanna make two of those because next week we're gonna seam them all together and get the main basic shape of our sweater. So as you're making your hexagons, you'll want to, now I have clothespins and as I was making mine, um, because we all want different sizes and some of us um, are tall or short or you know, what have you. So uh, we'll need different sizes. So as you work your rounds, be mindful of the fact that you can clip your hexagon together just to get a rough idea of how big you want them to be. And um, join me next week and we're gonna be seaming them together. If you're not a member of the Fiber Flux Ravelry Crochet Along group, hop on over, I'll put the link down below and you can join that group and share photos, you can ask questions. It's a wonderful community where people really are helping each other and we're all learning together. So hop on over and join that if you're not a member of that yet. Also, be sure and use the hashtag FiberFluxCal for all your social media, um, for your yarn choices, or maybe you have a work in progress, or maybe you just forged on ahead and you've finished your uh, sweater. So share all those photos, and if you use the FiberFluxCal hashtag, then we can see all the photos of all of your beautiful work. So that's all for this week. Join me next week and we're gonna seam it all together. It's super easy. And hit that subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. Thanks again. Bye -bye.